I, the Times uh, said they looked at satellite footage and confirmed that actually those people uh, were killed you know, during the period of the Russian occupation before uh, Russians left. And I saw that the, the Pentagon said they had not independently done their own confirmation, but they had no reason to you know, distrust what the, what the Times had done. And I know, you know, I know some people watching us now will say, oh, but you, know, you guys are, are very critical of the mainstream media, of the New York Times. And, and I, that's true. They get things wrong all the time. But so how do you, you know, how do you respond to that kind of thinking? Because I, I try to tell people, look, you shouldn't automatically distrust something you read in mainstream media. You should try to verify it on your own if you can, because they do get things wrong. So it's, it's wrong to have an attitude of blind faith. But that doesn't mean like literally every word you're going to encounter is a lie. And some people, I think, have that impression. I think that's exactly right, Robbie. Um, you know, there have been stories that have come out during this war um, that have later, you know, sometimes very soon after, um, proven to be um, not the case. You know, there was the ghost of Kiev that you had, mm -hmm. you know, all of these journalists reporting on. There was Zelensky telling us that a nuclear reactor had been hit. That turned out not to be the case. In this case, the New York Times looked at satellite imagery that you yourself can look at and see that many of those bodies have been on the ground for three weeks, which, you know, in addition to the horror of how they were killed, many of them executed with their arms tied behind their backs. The idea of the desecration of the dead lying out there for all that time. I mean, it, it's truly horrific. And um, so I think that, you know, when you have a video of a satellite image that you yourself can watch, you know, nobody's asking you, you know, who are you going to believe me or your lying eyes? Look at the, the footage yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can see that many of those bodies, not all of them, but many of them have been out there um, for three weeks. And um, it, it really is uh, um, horrific. It is very clearly evidence of a war crime. There's a man lying there amidst his, his potatoes, his shopping on the ground around his body. It was clearly you know, presenting no threat to anybody. And, you know, just it adds to the to, to the list of um, atrocities that have happened during this invasion. Uh, there was a story on CNN that I heard earlier this morning um, about a woman whose husband was just known as the most pro-Ukraine guy in their town. The Russians, you know, rounded him up, tortured him and killed him. And he was a school teacher. You know, so we're hearing more and more stories about that. And and I agree with you, Robbie. I agree with viewers who, who are saying, you know, this, the mainstream media has gotten a lot of this wrong. That is true. Uh, but you can verify a lot of this. You can wait for a minute. You can halt your own emotional response and say, OK, what is true and what is not true? And I think even then there is still another question of and what should we do with this, given that we know it? You know, I think there is still a reasonable debate to be had about that. What well, do you think, Robbie? Yeah, yeah, yeah abs right. Absolutely. And y you can say, I, I, you know, I'm looking at this. It, it's horrifying. It, it looks to me like pretty uh, credible evidence of of horrific conduct on, on the part of Russia. Now, th these are claims still that need to be, you know, adjudicated through the proper channels, whether that's, you know, international human rights courts, that kind of thing. It, it, it doesn't, we shouldn't jump to, you know, we being the U.S. Army doesn't mean, well, now, oh, yeah, well, well we, we see the body, so we have to roll in there. Like, we can still think it through. We can still be cautious and evaluate, you know, from the standpoint of our government, because the last thing you know, we want to do is start, we don't want to start a war at all. We don't want to be involved in a war. We don't want to start World War III. And we don't want to do it under pretenses that, that end up being wrong because you don't, it's the fog of war. It's confusing. It is, it is almost without a doubt that there have been atrocities committed on the other side as well because war is an atrocity and terrible things happen. So it's still on us to be very rational and sober-minded and try and do everything we can to not escalate further, you know, which is why, while I'm sympathetic to Zelensky and I understand what he's saying and he's advocating for his country and that I think is perfectly logical and honorable, it's still on us, you know, to resist escalating this further. And in fact, to do everything we can to empower Zelensky to reach some kind of uh, accords with, with Putin to end this because it's, it's horrifying. They're destroying the entire country.